Tianping Mountain, we are literally a stone's throw from Suzhou City, which in itself is two hours west of Shanghai. Naturally, we are fueled by Peking Duck today and powered by the mighty Bafang M510 system, which is at the heart of this very beautiful Mark O bike. Our task today is to talk you through the details of this motor before heading back to the HQ and taking a look at the production line. Bafang. Uh, we've had Bafang on the channel quite a few times, although I fear not enough given some of the feedback from you guys. Hence, we are in yellow weather warning, uh, 80 to 90% humidity on some absolutely incredible trails. Now, if you saw our previous video, we were in R&D behind the Bafang systems. Uh, what's interesting is that that M510 motor, it's got a peak power of around about 600 watts. But uh, on the test, on, on the dyno, we, they showed that they can actually push that motor to 120 newton meters. The chassis behind this system today is a Marco, beautiful looking bike, which is from Beijing, 170 mil travel. Now, the battery in this bike is 720 watt hours. Now, the great thing about Bafang, they have a modular system, so you can have a 500, 400, 720, up to a maximum 1,050 watt hours, which is actually on the M560 motor, American version, 750 watts, which actually pushes 140 newton meters and over a thousand watts peak. So just a quick overview view there before this aeroplane goes over. Now, Bafang do the complete package when it comes to e-bike systems. They do the motors, various motors. They do batteries, they do top tube mounted displays, other displays which are handlebar mounted. And on this bike, this very minimalist remote. Now, later on in this video, you'll actually see the ladies who put these details together. It is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, but for now, let me tell you that this motor has uh, five modes, Eco, Tour, Sport, Sport Plus, and Boost. Boost is pretty potent, I have to say that. Tough old time on the trails, I have to say. In fact, creating an e-bike motor is a difficult business. We saw in the previous video the huge amount of R&D that goes into creating reliable, trouble-free e-bike systems. You know, over 200 boffins in, uh, in those test labs and in the design technology center. Um, we're now at the production facility, and here's my host, Winnie. Hi. Hi, you. Winnie. All right? Hi. Yeah. Uh, actually, so it's, hot. it's hot out there. Yeah, it's so hot today. I want to have a look today at how, say, an M510 motor is produced and assembled. So what's the, what's the stages in that process? Yeah, so after the design by the R&D engineers, we got the components from our suppliers, who are also the experts in the, these markets. And for the components, including the gills, spindle, housing, um, stators, something like that. And this is really the beginnings of the production called IQC, the okay. incoming material quality control. I guess when you see, I guess things like re the reduction gear is gonna be so accurate, right? I suppose yes. there's like huge teams of people all around this surrounding area, which go into yeah. doing that. But how many people are involved in the production line itself? Yeah, in this building we have uh, six floors and about 200 um, staff. So should we have a look at the IQC center then? Yeah, let's go inside. Okay. So Mike, why is IQC so important? IQC is important because of the product is made up of all the components. So any components failure can cause product issue. What kind of issues are we talking exactly? So you you know like we can have the uh, the like the water 
uh, issue, like the noise issue or efficiency not good. Yeah, yeah, we don't want to have uh, noisy motors, that's for sure. So when you're talking precision, what sort of precision, how precise are we talking exactly? Right now, uh, we have the capability of the precision uh, is 0 0.001 millimeter. Zero, 0 0.001 millimeters, wow, yes. that's pretty precise. Yes. I'm going to show you a, an exploded view of an M510 motor. And we talked about the suppliers. The suppliers give the excellence of the manufacturing of each component part. So we've got a bearing supplier, a um, gear reduction supplier. We've got some other reduction gear parts here. Housing, this is, this is interesting. So we've got the crankshaft and the torque and cadence sensor. I'm not actually allowed to show you the production process of that part. Uh, we've got the rotator and the stator, separator, and of course, back to that little beauty, the PCB board. Each of those parts are actually measured in this room. So we've got um, a coordinates measuring machine here, we've got profiler, here we've got a gear measuring machine, and over here is a optical shaft gauge. And then finally, there's this one, get this, an energy dispersive x-ray fluorescence spectrometer. Where's Winnie? Okay, Steve, I think everything is checked fine. I'm going to show you the workshop, production workshop upstairs. So okay. let's go. I guess this is where things get cranked up, right Winnie? Yeah, welcome to a production workshop. Uh, today we are assembling the M510 motor. So for the hub motor and mid motor, we have total nine production lines. Nine production lines? Yeah. Right, okay. right. And for the production line per line per day, for the mid motor, we produce about 800 to 1,000 species. A thousand mid-drive motors per day? Yes, Crikey. precisely. Wow, okay, so let's get into the production line. Do I, uh, do I need anything? Yes, I think you may need ah, the gloves. Right. Great, <laughs> thanks. Yeah. Okay. Folks, I have great pleasure in being able to show you around the assembly line here at the Fang of the M510. Let's pick up this casing. Uh, I want to show you this. It is so, so beautifully made. If you can see the detail in that. Right, let's go through the different stages. Stage one, we take the casing and then torque sensor. This gets inserted into the casing here. Stage two, the gentleman over here takes the stator assembly and the gasket and the rotator, puts those together with the gasket back on the assembly line. Next up, this young man is putting the stator assembly onto the casing and test the current. Back onto the line, and the lady over there is putting a PCB board onto the motor. He's back over the line, and then we have, oh, right, we're now onto the reduction gear. Reduction gear gets inserted into the motor. Lovely bit of black grease on there. Uh, back over the line, and we've now got um, a casing which goes on top of that reduction gear back over here and then we've got a couple of seals going on and then there's another final seal applied to the crank then it's back over the line and we've got i think it's the right it's the clutch really important part of the process clutch assembly goes on we've got gasket on there and then i think it's back over for another another pc pcb board assembly there you go that gets assembled by this gentleman and then back over for another casing assembly, more seals, uh, a couple of tightened bolts, and then down to final checking here. Boom, 14 people, 1,000 motors a day. So how important is it to get really specialist suppliers to, to get you these products? Yeah, our uh, concept is, is uh, professional, the people to the professional, the things. Right, yeah. and I guess in, in, in Suzhou, there's a lot of this specialist staff, right? Uh, yeah. What would you say is the most important part of the production line here? Actually, every step is very important, and we adhere to the Ling Manufacturing Management. What's Ling Manufacturing Management? It means the low cost and high efficiency. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to the line. Once assembled, the drive unit undergoes some really detailed analysis as part of the assembly process. Each and every motor gets checked for such things as power, torque, efficiency, and much more. 
Only once the criteria are met do they get the pass. Sorry, can I just stop you there? Now, I know we're focusing on mid-drive motor assembly, but I've just been shown this floor and it's pretty mind-blowing. This is where they produce the hub motors and the level of automation on this floor is on another level. Just to give you an example, this machine alone is the rotor assembly. Previously, it used to take five people 90 seconds to get one of those out the door. Now it takes one person to manage the machine and they do each of those motors in 19 seconds. But just take a look at the machinery on this floor. Probably very expensive. They developed all these, all these machines themselves. You've got a um, reduction gear going on there. Got clutch gear assembly going on there. A hub component automatic assembly. Boxing the bikes out, boxing the motors out the door. Hub component automatic assembly. And then, ooh, don't know what that machine is. But so, for hub drive e-mountain bikers, I'm sure that is incredibly fascinating. Back now to the mid-drives. Winnie, that was incredible bit of assembly there. What have we got next? We are going to see uh, how do we produce the displays, the yep. electrical workshop. Okay, perfect. What button do I press? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. We need to get that machine down first. What's this? Uh, to uh, put your shoes on that. What, in there? Yeah. What, really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And after the alert. But it's hot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's, like okay. it's actually warm. Okay, what happens next? Yeah. Push this button here? Yes, use the face ID. Whoa. I think that sound is the sound of lunch break. Look at everyone's, everyone's going out. Yes, it's time for the lunch. Come on in, Jack. Yes. We can wait here, then the, every, every, the door will close. We timed this wrong. Everyone's going for lunch. Yeah. <laughs> some, some, some people will. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> What have, you, what have you got in mind, Winnie? <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I don't think I didn't like that. Really, was quite unexpected. Okay, so here we have the um, yeah. the display and remote, right? Yes. Okay. And also the controllers. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go and have a look. Right, I've now gone from blue gloves to pink gloves. Now, as you can see, they're miles too small for me. And there's a reason for that, is because these ladies are working on some incredibly fine detail. Got some connection going on here, and I never thought I'd see this. This is actually a remote button for an e-bike. And as you can see, these parts are so tiny. I mean, without glasses, I can't see what they're doing. So. Back over here, we've got um, leads here for a hub drive motor, smiling. Uh, and over here, we have some lead where the, it's actually, it's actually a coated copper, which is attached to the end of each of those leads before it goes down to Chao Hua here with a hat who gets the final test to make sure those connectors are firmly uh, located into that connector, if you get what I'm saying. Um, look at these, look at these reels here. They're like so fine, like projectors. Time now to go into the display assembly. Okay, we're now into the electric controller assembly line. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce you to Gloria, who is the boss? Right, what we got here? We've got some welding going on. These are, these are controllers for hub drive motors. Welding as in kind of soldering walking down the line here. So we've got the final product where the lead, which I showed you earlier, is now connected up to the, the PCB board. For the super skilled workers at Bafang, it's like working on a jigsaw puzzle that they know intimately well. One such part of the jigsaw here. And if you look at this machine, really cool. It's like an ice cream machine. This is where the glue is added into this component part to stop any vibrations of any of those leads. Now the assembly process follows a similar theme to the motors where the Fang have a series of uh, suppliers who supply high quality component parts. First step is the PCB board. Now this gets some solder applied to it. I cannot tell you 
how finely detailed this is. I can't even see the, the solder. Then we go into a sealing process and then the PCB board gets assembled onto the plastic cover. Can I just show you this? These are the bolts. <laughs> There's one went on the floor there. These are the bolts, right? Look, it's, it's like, it is crazy, crazy small. And this lady here is putting them together like they were wheel nuts on a truck. I have to pick that one up later, guys, sorry. <laughs> now, this is actually blowing my mind because, you know, I look at the display on my e-bike every day and I can't believe the complexity that goes into the manufacture assembly of this. Now, come to the other side, we've now got a lead which is being soldered onto the PCB board. Again, there's no magnification involved here. These guys are doing it with their own eyesight. I mean, it's just mind blowing. So some welding taking place, more welding taking place here. And then this lady is actually cleaning up the final product to make sure there's no flaws in it before it goes on to some more sealing, some more glue taking place here, which houses that PC board firmly into the display casing. And then finally, we've got the remote lead, which is prepared before it gets attached to the display. So folks, next time you switch your e-bike motor on or off or toggle between the modes, have a thought for these guys who carry out an incredibly detailed and precise task, and they do it hundreds of thousands of times per year. Just simply blows my mind. Uh, which takes us into possibly the cleanest room in the building. This is where the LCD gets attached to the display mount. So come and have a look over here. So this is now where the glue is going to be attached to the display. I love machines like this. It's like being in a dentist. I go to the dentist a lot. I don't really have these machines in my teeth. Don't worry about that. Uh, and then, so the display is then attached onto the top. And it's pretty much job done. Except it's not job done. The Fang's work doesn't stop there. They also produce batteries from 400 watt hours to over 1,000 watt hours. They do this 45 minutes from their HQ in Suzhou City, where they have a dedicated building designed specifically for the manufacture and testing of e bike batteries. Oh, that's it, Zai Chen from China. Uh, but how about that? Fantastic trails, food, motors, but more importantly, fantastic people. If you haven't seen our R&D video from Bafang, please go and check that out. But for now, as I said, it's Zai Chen from China. Fantastic thanks to uh, Circle and to Wilson for being great minders and to Winnie and Water for being such amazing hosts.